Joining us now, Michigan's Attorney General, Dana Nessel. Attorney General, thank you for joining us. So in the lead up to the 2020 election, there was an entire plot that materialized to kidnap Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer. So with that in mind, what can you tell us about the situation there right now in Michigan? And, and how concerned are you about keeping everyone safe ahead of Election Day? Well, we're taking every precaution possible, and we've been running tabletop exercises through various state agencies, actors, law enforcement, um, you know, clerks throughout the state. We've been doing this for months and months in preparation for the election. Uh, additionally, my department just recently issued a, a lengthy memo that was dispersed to all law enforcement agencies in the state, reviewing all of the state laws, um, particular instances of bad conduct that we anticipated it's possible that they may see. And what we propose uh, are ways to address those issues should they occur. Um, and in addition, I mean, we are going to have a 24-hour hotline set up in my department. We're going to have special agents that are dispersed throughout the entire state, as well as uh, attorneys. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to ensure that people are, are safe. Um, and so is, uh, you know, poll workers, election workers, as well as voters throughout the course of this election. I want to play part of what your Secretary of State, Johnson Benson, said about bad actors threatening Michigan's election system. Let's listen. We know that our, because our systems are secure, there are foreign bad actors and adversaries to democracy on the global scale who will seek to potentially not hack our systems, but hack voters' minds to spread falsehoods and misinformation, not just to sow seeds of distrust, but to diminish citizens' confidence in the process and in their own voices. So she's concerned about foreign adversaries sowing distrust, but we're already seeing that distrust domestically, where one recent poll showed half of Trump voters already say they want him to challenge the election results of Harris wins. Many believe there will be widespread fraud. What does that tell you about what you could be up against? Yeah, it's so unfortunate. You know, our, uh, our system of elections, especially here in Michigan, are so safe so secure and so accurate. And I could give you so many different instances of that, but of course we use paper ballots. We allowed for, you know, recounts. We do hundreds of audits. In the 2020 election, it wasn't just that the Republican State Senate did um, an entire analysis of the 2020 election and found that the election was accurate, but even in Antrim County, where you know there were all kinds of lies that were spread from the Trump campaign and from some of his supporters, they did a hand recount and they confirmed its accuracy. So again, it's so unfortunate that we have the likes of, of Elon Musk, who every three seconds I see a, a tweet from him where he is working to disseminate misinformation and disinformation. And I think we all know at this point, that was the very reason that he purchased Twitter to begin with, right? But it all works just to sow the seeds of doubt in uh, our electoral processes, which is so concerning and so disappointing. And that's why I think that, you know, voices have to be very loud out there to make sure that people understand that our system really is safe and secure and accurate and can be trusted irrespective of who wins the election in our state or in various other states. We all remember just how tight Michigan's results were in 2020. Biden won by three points, ended up being more than 154,000 votes. But there was this red mirage, which made it look like Trump was up on Election Day because the absentee and the early votes weren't processed. Michigan changed its vote counting rules since then to start counting absentee ballots earlier. So how soon can we anticipate results this time around? Well, first of all, I would push back on the notion that a 154,000 vote difference is a close election. I mean, how do you make up in any recount situation with for 154,000 votes? It's never been done. And that's why the Trump campaign did not even bother to request a recount, right? But what we've done since that time is we are allowing for early processing uh, of, of the ballots. And that means that, you know, the, it's not that the votes will be counted, it's that the ballots will be um, processed, um, you know, several days early 
uh, before the election, which should allow for election results to come back a little sooner. But I think it's important to note that not all communities have decided to pre-process. And in fact, the city of Warren, which is the third largest city in the state of Michigan, has elected not to pre-process. So results are not going to come in immediately after the election, but they should come in much, much quicker than before. We've already had 1.3 a million absentee ballots that have been, uh, you know, received by their clerks. Uh, so I do see the results coming in faster than they have in the past as a result, but it's not going to be immediate. And we know um, we can see this trend uh, that Democrats tend to vote earlier, either during their early voting process or by absentee, whereas Republicans are more likely to vote on Election Day. Okay. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't none of that makes the results inaccurate. Right. Exactly. Which is why we're discussing what the process is here to, to make expectations accordingly. Thank you so much, Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel, for joining us this morning. Good luck as you move forward here towards Election Day in 12 days now.